Hi guys, it's me again, Teacher Jay. For this video on multi-component flask distillation, we're going to talk about the estimation of dew point and bubble point pressures at a constant temperature. Okay, we are in the second part of the estimation of dew point and bubble point data for multi-component mixtures. So this time, uh, this video will talk about the estimation of dew point and bubble point pressures for multi-component mixtures. If you haven't watched the video on the dew point and bubble point temperatures, I will post the link below or I will annotate the link for the video if you want to watch. For now, let's solve first for the bubble point and dew point pressures. So we have the same problem over here wherein we have a mixture containing 25 mole percent and pentane, 45 mole percent and hexane, and 30 mole percent and heptane at a temperature. Okay, this is. Um, I need to change this one. Okay, at a temperature of 73 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I just copied the. Um, okay, I'll just type degrees. Celsius. Okay, so for this one, um, at a constant temperature of 73 degrees Celsius, we need to determine the pressure that will induce the formation of bubble or we also need to determine the value of the pressure that will cause the formation of the first drop of liquid in the mixture. So let's start answering first for the bubble point pressure. So again, let's establish the scenario. What's the possible scenario for the estimation of the bubble point pressure problem? Bubble P. Bubble point P. So the possible scenario, okay, to, I usually make scenarios because I want myself to under to create a picture in my head before I solve the problem so that I can appreciate the problem more okay, and um, lessen the chances of me getting mistakes so when you talk about bubble point pressure okay it's the pressure at which the first bubble of vapor is formed so of course the first bubble of vapor you would expect that the feed or the initial mixture is pure liquid right because when you talk about pure bubble ah, first bubble so before the first bubble is formed the mixture is or the mixture should be pure liquid phase so for pure um, for uh, for a mixture that only contains one phase that only exists as one phase I will just use the z variable z1 z2 z3 to represent the overall mole fractions of the components in the mixture so for z1 i have 0 0.25 for z2 i have 0 0.45 and for z3 i have 0 0.30 so we need to adjust the pressure so p adjustments in such a way that two phases will be formed the first phase is a bubble of vapor so it's the vapor phase vapor phase and then we have a liquid phase of course the liquid phase at this point once the P is adjustment to, okay, to produce the two phases. P, okay, it's, it's in bar. Okay, okay. The the mole fraction of the liquid phase has the same magnitude as the one that is um, given in the um, initial situation. So the reason for this is, from my understanding, of course, you only produce a drop of the vapor. Uh, sorry a drop a bubble of vapor so of course more or less 
the mole fraction of the entire system in the liquid phase is more or less the same as the initial feed. It's just a drop of vapor. So there are no significant changes in the mole fractions yet in the liquid phase relative to the initial mole fractions. So they still follow the same values and then your vapor phase compositions are unknown. Y1, Y2, and Y3. Okay, so we don't know this. Okay, Remember that for this problem, the temperature is constant. Okay, so we have a constant temperature of 73 degrees Celsius. So the Kelvin, um, Kelvin equivalent, okay, for a while, I will get the calculator. So we have 346.15. Ay, sorry. Okay, that's the sum already. So 273.15 equals 346.15 Kelvin. That's the value of the temperature. That means in this problem, it's somehow easier with respect to the va to the values of the PVAPs. The values of my PVAP are lacking. Okay. So there's PVAP 3 here. Okay, I think I left it in the previous page. Okay, apologies. Okay, let's go back to the... Wait. Oh, it's not here as well. I wasn't able to type it probably. Yeah, okay. I'll check it for a while. Oops. Yeah, I wasn't able to copy it here. 11.431 minus 35200 over RT. Yeah, the same thing. 11. Point. So I'm using, I will be using Excel. So that's why I did not really bother. Or probably I forgot typing everything. But anyway, um, for a constant value of t so we already know the value of t in advance so we can just plug in the values of t and we don't need to do a trial and error for the value of pvap because we have a fixed value of t so we can solve for the pvaps in advance okay to solve for the value of p bubble remember that you have your x1 x2 and x3 values already and remember that you also have your P1 VAP values already. P2 VAP values. I will not show it here because I will be showing the Excel later. But um, I have calculated all the P1 VAP, P2 VAP, and P3 VAPs in advance. You have, the, you have these values. And your system follows Reynolds law. Okay, remember that the system is assumed to be ideal and it follows Reynolds law. That means you can actually get the total pressure which is equal to the bubble pressure at this temperature okay, using the equation on the summation of the products of the mole fraction of each component multiplied by its vapor pressure so in this case we can actually solve for the bubble point pressure immediately without doing trial and error so we can just solve for the x1 p1 vap plus x2 p2 vap plus x3 p3 vap easy so we can solve for that value and we're going to use Excel for that one later. So before we go to the Excel, of course, we need to solve for the Y1, Y2, and Y3 as well to complete the system or to complete the data in the system. So for the Reynolds law, okay, remember that um, the equation uh, relating the Y and X Okay, is y1 p equals x1 p1 vap so that means the equations are 
oops, y1 equals x1 p1 vap over p, right? And that goes the same, okay, the same goes for the other components, all right? So this, the p over here is your p bubble, okay, that's a p bubble. Okay, please take note, I will not be writing it in the screen. Okay, P bubble. Okay, I'll just erase this one. I'll just write it anyway, you know, just to, you know, just to make sure that you are not lost. P bubble. Okay. So you can then solve for that one. So no iteration is necessary for the estimation of your bubble point pressure. So let's go to Excel. Okay, so we have here the estimation for the bubble point pressure. So these are the values of your mole fractions in the liquid phase. The values of your PVAPs are the following. They are connected to the cell for the temperature Kelvin. So they have a constant temperature. No need to trial and error for this one. And the values for the y1 okay are this one so it follows the equation for the x well, uh, xi multiplied by pi vap over the value of the p bubble okay um please take note that the 0.5 here is not the correct answer yet what we're going to do for excel is that we're going to follow this formula this one we are going to encode a formula in excel that will follow this format and consequently the value of the y1 will follow to change uh, uh, the value of the y1 will consequently change after changing this one so let us get the sum of the products of the components oops okay so this is what i will do i'm not really that super techy in excel i just know the basics yeah, so I won't delve too much on, you know, uh, uh, soon if I might, if I will be good in Excel, I might do videos as to how to make your life more efficient and easy in Excel. So notice that if I will solve for the P bubble, the, f the values of the Y also changes. The values of the Y also change, okay. So the answer for this one is okay. So we have here 0 0.3304155 and 44. Oops. I think there's something wrong with my Oops. It doesn't Okay, this one. All right. So yeah, there's a mistake in the formula. Okay, please take that. For my dew point, it is oh three four. Okay, I'll just edit the dew point later. Okay, for the bubble point, my final answers are the following. Okay, so the indication that your answer is correct is you get this one. Total for the y should be one, and of course for the x, it's already equal to one. So the answers, the answer is the. The answer for the P bubble is 1.413. So let's write it here. 1.413 bar. Oops, I need to use another color. 1.413. The value for your Y1 is 0 0.537. 0 0.537. Uh, next is you have 0 0.368 and lastly you have 0 0.095 all right so that's it for bubble point pressure let's now proceed to the dew point pressure dew point pressure is somehow different because uh, you are given the value of y so it's not direct to the point uh, I mean remember that for the determination of the bubble point P you have already the formula which makes use of the x1 x2 and x3 
So to determine the dew point pressure, you can't use anymore the value of x1 because your initial um, the mole fractions that are given are coming from the uh, are coming from the vapor phase. So you already have a pure vapor phase um, mixture. So for a second scenario, we have dew point pressure. Dew point pressure. So the scenario again. I like. I I want to make scenarios just to have a clear vision in my head. So let's say we have a pure, oops, pure vapor phase mixture. Pure vapor phase mixture. Pure vapor phase mixture. So this time you still use the same values of Z1, Z2, Z3, just to be unbiased with the sign up uh, with the symbols. 0.35, Okay, it's so just the same values, but this time the scenario is different, right? Because earlier it's pure liquid, but here for dew point it should be pure vapor at first, so that the first drop of liquid or the first dew of liquid will form so you adjust the pressure p adjustments and then you will form two phases afterwards so you have i put the liquid phase at the bottom arrow because liquids are more dense so they go to the bottom part as compared to the gases yeah, so there's, that's the logic behind my arrangement. Okay, so for the vapor phase, hmm, so you already have the values of y. Ah, oh, happens. You already have the values of your y1, which is 0 0.25, your y2, which is 0 0.45, and your y3, which is equal to 0 0.30. For the liquid phase, you need to know that. Yeah. That is the mole fraction of the first drop of your liquid at a certain pressure. P do. Okay, of course, the temperature is a constant value. Okay. Just checking if I got, if I placed units. So, what will we do here? Okay. So we need to establish first the equations. So remember, Carriel's law. Carriel's law is x1 p1 vap. Okay, no problem with p1 vap, okay? Because we have a fixed temperature for this one, so no need to guess for that one. So we have your y1 p. Okay. So for you to solve for Okay, real slow. Okay, very basic. So for you to solve for the value of the x1, x2, and x3, of course, you need to re-express re the value of your... Oh, sorry, the equation in terms of the mole fractions in the liquid phase. So you have x1, y1, p over p1, vap. Okay, so I will just do a shortcut for the other components. Okay, apologies y2 p over p2 vap and then your y3 is yeah it's the same y3 p p3 vap so what is unknown here okay, you have the y1s you have the p1 p2 and v y1 y2 y3 p1 p2 p3 the problem is the value of your p you don't know what's the value of p Okay, so you need to guess it. So dew point pressure is same for the dew point temperature and bubble point temperature. You need to apply iteration. So again, we do the same thing. We need to make sure that um, the last equation should be the constraint for the three axes. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 1. When you say constraint, it's your limiting, uh, it limits um, the, or it controls 
how far your values will be estimated uh, during the mathematical calculations. Because this is iteration, they could just put any value of x and then make your answer look as if it's, it was already solved. But you need to control the values of x in such a way that it should follow the fourth equation. Okay, so the whole um, process is this. You need to guess the value of b and then you need to solve for x i by doing y i p over p three vap. Oh, not what p three p i vap. So you guess, and then after you guess, after you solve, you have to make sure that the values of your x i should be equal to one. So if yes. Okay, you then solve for the. Oops, the if you see if the answer is yes, if it, it was able to get this one, then your p is equal to p g. But if no, then the answer would be p is equal or not equal to p g. And then you do the same thing again. You guess. At such time, you will get the. P equals P2. Okay, let's do it. Let's go to the Excel file. So I have already prepared it in advance. Of course, the initial or the at equilibrium, okay, the mole fractions in the feed or in the initial condition is the same in the equilibrium condition for the Y. And then for the PVAP, okay, I just did a hitching. Okay, the, the J5, it's 346.15, which has the same pressure as this one here, 346.15. Apologies for being lazy in this part, okay? So I just copy-pasted everything. Oops, it's not C4. It's, okay, I'll just use this one. Okay, I mean, I'll just change everything. Yeah, just to, you know, make myself consistent. There are really times that when you solve, you know, um, problems that are too technical such as this one, you just need to, you know, make your life easier by not making a fuss out of the complications in the calculations. Okay, so our goal is to estimate the value of P in such a way that you will get um, particular values of X and then when you sum up all the Xs, it should be equal to 1. However, the sum is not yet equal to 1, which means that we need to do iteration. Okay, are you ready to do it? Ah, it's blue. So, are you ready to do the iteration? Okay, so let's do it. So, for the solver function data solver, oops, you need to be careful because the, per, the cells can reset all. I, I, I click reset for everything. Okay, so our objective is to make this constraint, this cell, the sum of all the x's, be equal to a value of 1. And then we need to change the value of p to achieve that goal. Okay, let's see. Okay, so as quick as the light. Okay, so... By doing iteration, the value of your dew point pressure is equal to 0 0.877 bars. While the mole fractions of your liquid phase, the first drop of your liquid, are the following. Okay, so alright, that's it for our video on estimations of dew point and bubble point pressures. So I hope you learned something today and yeah. So it's very important to know these um, values, okay? So 334 and 350 for dew point and bubble point, and for uh, dew point and bubble temperature, and for the dew point and bubble pressure, it's 1.413 and 0 0.877, okay? So if you ask me why is this very important, okay, remember that in pure substances, 
there are no terms such as dew point and bubble point. The substance that is pure will just boil at a constant temperature and a particular pressure, right? So there will always be a pair. But for dew point and bub for mixtures, the different pairings are, um, you know, existing. So the moment that um, your mixture starts to boil, okay, this is the temperature. Okay, that's the, the first um, condition. Uh, assuming that the concentration is this one. Okay, so yeah. So it's actually a range. So beyond this value, uh, the beyond this value, the, the mixture is VLE, vapor liquid. And beyond this value, above this 350, that's um, pure vapor. Yeah, I think I need to write it like summary. Just to, I don't know, just to make everything more organized for everybody. So, okay. temperature and pressure. And then um, bubble and dew. Okay, just to summarize everything. So for the okay, we have here bubble point three three four point ninety four three three four point ninety four Kelvin, and then for the dew point that's three fifty point fifty nine. 350.59 Kelvin. Okay, so what does this indicate? Just put it here. So in between the two values, actually, vapor and liquid phases exist. Okay, it's at um. Remember that in this case, at constant, at specified compositions okay it's not always true for um, okay, at the specified compositions so like the uh, I think you know what I mean the this one the Z1 Z2 Z3 at specified compositions okay in between these um, ranges of temperature at a constant pressure of 1.013 bar okay. because if the, if the value of pressure changes the values of dew point and bubble point will change okay this is only true for the specified composition and a specified pressure so within this range this is vapor and liquid mixture but above this range that is pure vapor and below this range this is pure liquid but remember this is only true for this specified compositions and for the specified compositions and for the bubble point and dew point pressure okay always remember okay, yeah so it's very important that you are very specific with the things that we're thinking and the things that you are um, mentioning so you can say that ah at this range this is true no it's not true for all conditions picture is 73 so the value for the dew point pressure is a bubble 1.413 1.413 and 0 0.877 okay bar so at this range okay, in between this range at the specified composition and temperature so this is the bubble point pressure so in between this vapor and liquid but below this pressure at the specified temperature and compositions okay this is pure liquid 
Okay. And above is pure vapor. Okay. All right. So that's it for our problem today. So I hope you learned something um, in this video. You know, this is my own way or my own take on how to analyze estimations of bubble point and dew point pressures. So please watch the two videos as uh, to how uh, uh, you know in terms of the differences of calculating dew point pressures, dew point temperatures, bubble point pressures, and bubble point temperatures. Okay, so I hope to see you in my other videos. I'll be posting more soon. Thank you so much and goodbye.